pledge of the flag, please. In our major facility fund, we have $4,759,753.75 for a total of $19,373,925.94. And uh, we took out that million, that's why we're under $20 million this, uh, this month. So I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Uh, any other uh, questions or comments on the financial report? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Will we have a budget amendment? Yeah. Yes, uh, Steve does. I'm sorry, Steve. Budget amendment number 2018-03 is to recognize $5,970 from the county. That's for the purpose of uh, transferring it to Stanley Fire Company for the um, so water or is the fire protection uh, and was uh, granted that the county gets from the state but for it to the town reported to Senator. So we have a motion to approve budget amendment 2018-03. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that budget amendment? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we also have a second budget amendment tonight. Right, budget amendment number 2018-04 to recognize $16,412 in seized funds and their use in purchasing a John Deere Gator uh, under the state of Maryland contract uh, used by the uh, Elkton Police Department. Very good. Uh, do we have a motion to approve budget amendment 2018-04? So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the Gator? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Okay, it is 7.05, and uh, we're going to have a public hearing tonight on Ordinance 1-2018 Medical Facilities, and it's being presented for introduction purposes to the board. So, Gene, here one. Can you tell us a little bit about where we're at? Sure. Uh, we're looking to amend the Elton Zoning Ordinance um, with respect to... Uh, certain health care uses, land use. So this ordinance um, was heard before the Planning Commission last night uh, and was the uh, was unanimous recommendation to um, adopt the <coughs> ordinance as written. Uh, so the, Elton, the ordinance is concerning Elton Zoning Ordinance Article 2, Basic Definitions and Interpretations, Article 10, Permissible Uses, and Article 12, Supplementary Use Regulations. And this is for the purpose of amending um, this article, Elton Zoning Ordinance Article 2. Do you want me to read the whole, the, okay, just get to the meat of it? Okay. <coughs> so in Article 2, we're adding a definition for counseling facility, uh, which is basic definitions and interpretations. Counseling facility, mental health treatment facility for the practice of mental health counseling, the practice of marriage and family therapy, pregnancy counseling, anger management, drug and alcohol abuse, 
and or the practice of clinical social work on a non-intensive outpatient basis only. This use strictly prohibits the on-site dispensing of both medicinal and non-medicinal drugs. And that's a definition that we didn't have originally, so we're adding that definition. Then under um, Article 10, Permissible Uses, Section 7, Permissible Uses Table, we're going to add uh, Section 2.113, Pharmacies. Uh, they'll be permitted in the C2 and Business Industrial Zoning Districts. C2 is Highway Commercial. Um, and it'll be formatted per, uh, consistent with Permissible Uses Table. Other changes include Section 3.110, Under Operations, um, this is subsection. This is a subsection under Office Clerical Research and Services, not primarily related to the sale of goods or merchandise. So this subsection 3.110 will remove the term physicians under operations designed to attract and serve a low volume of customers or clients on the premises. Um, 3.120 uh, will remove the term offices or um, and physicians or dentists under that it will now read, 3.120 will read, clinics of not more than 10,000 square feet of gross floor area, permitted by special exception with conditions. We're removing it in um, the zoning district C1, which is the downtown district. Uh, we're continuing to allow it in C2, C3, and we're including a new district, the business industrial zoning district. So we're now allowing that in that district. Uh, new section will be three point, subsection will be 3.130. Primary offices of physicians with up to three professionals seeing patients, including nurse practitioners and physician assistants, permitted by special exception in the C1, C2, C3, and business industrial zoning districts. That's new. Another new one is 3.140. Primary offices of physicians with four or more professionals seeing patients, including nurse practitioners and physician assistants, permitted by special exception in the C2, C3, and BI zoning districts. 3.150 is also new. Counseling permitted by special <coughs> exception in the C2, C3, and BI zoning districts. Other changes include um, under subsection 7, which is institutional residence or care or confinement facilities. Um, 7.100 for hospitals, clinics, and other medical, including mental health treatment facilities in excess of 10,000 square feet of gross floor area uh, will be permitted by special exception with conditions in C2, C3, and the new one is uh, Business Industrial Zoning District. Uh, town Center District has been stricken. And under 7.20, nursing care institutions, intermediate care institutions, handicapped or infirm institutions, and child care institutions permitted by special exception in the ROC1 and C2 District. PUD has been removed because that, subsection, that section of the zoning ordinance will be removed. We currently do not have any language for PUD planned unit development uh, land use. Uh, but the town center zoning district has also been stricken from that. Under Article 12, supplementary use regulations, clinics will be changed from 3.130 to 3.120. That reference for that. Um, under clinics and state licensed medical clinics of less than 10,000 square feet of gross floor area, um, it uh, was currently permitted in C1, C2, and C3. That will be changed to C2, C3, and business industrial zoning districts by special exception, subject to the following conditions. The conditions remain the same. There's a new condition that states, uh, shall be located a minimum of 1,000 linear feet from any school, daycare facility, or residentially zoned property or residential use. <coughs> Under section 17 for the supplementary use regulations regarding hospitals, um, that remains the same except that the business industrial zone has been added as a zone in which that's permitted by special exception, but the town center zone has been removed. And under the supplementary use regulations, um, sorry, uh, there's no change in some of the requirements. Uh, there'll be additional requirements um, for the clinic use. Um, um, they must provide a copy of the application for licensure from the state of Maryland for a state licensed medical clinic. Number five, all permits and licenses required to operate the clinic must be verified prior to opening to the public. Number six, as part of the special exception approval, the board may impose other reasonable requirements deemed necessary to safeguard the health, safety, and general welfare of the public. 
And number seven, waiting area. Shall provide an interior waiting area sufficient in size to accommodate one person per parking space as required. Area shall be calculated using five square feet for each person waiting. Those are all the changes to the ordinance with respect to health care uses. Does anyone from the board have any questions for Gene in regards to this? The planning board last evening, I did not make the meeting. Was there any changes? Um, no, they understood that there was, um, we're removing the PUD language, they didn't know if it was redundant, that we were going to strike it at this point, if it was going to be removed, but it was, that was it. There was no other changes. Well, I'd just like to compliment you on all the hard work. Uh, we put in a uh, uh, six-month uh, moratorium on uh, <coughs> having uh, facilities in our town, and uh, it's an ever-changing business, and I uh, really appreciate your hard work. Thank uh, you. It was a good this is a, 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 a public hearing. If anyone uh, from the audience would like to uh, make a comment or say anything in regards to this, please state your name and your address. Uh, come, come on up and, or stand up and tell me your name and address and what your comment would be, sir. Give them G-I-B-L-I-N 214 York Street, the uh, senior residences. Uh, I have a comment that uh, I think Chief of Police, Police Matthew Donnelly, is the best season Chief of Police that Epton has ever had. And I think that his department is absolutely sterling. And I believe that's a British term to mean that they're really great. I would like to make a motion that by unanimous proclamation that you made a four-star Chief of Police tonight. There you go. Well, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, this, is, this is actually a public hearing in regards to the uh, ordinance that we just heard, but I appreciate that input. Is there any comments from the public in regards to this? It is 7-14. This public hearing is closed in regards to this. Uh, do we have a motion from the board to accept ordinance 1-2018 on medical facilities presented for introduction only? We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Gene. And I do have the notes on the four star. Yeah, I'll second that. <laughs> okay, next up uh, we have Union Hospital uh, of Cecil County. Wants to come down and, and tell us a little bit about the project. I know we've got a we want to do a, uh, a pilot, uh, which is a payment in lieu of taxes, and I think it's a well worthwhile project, and I think it's very important for the board to understand exactly what uh, uh, our neighbor, one of our finest neighbors, is doing. Mark, if you could introduce the whole group, that'd be great. I'll introduce uh, our, our utility partner, uh, which is uh, Mr. Jack Sims from uh, Unison. Hello. And I'm Tom Dougal. I'm a uh, Unison's consultant from all the group. Very good. Can you, uh, uh, I was, uh, of course, I sat in the, the initial meeting, uh, but I wanted to make sure the board was up to date with exactly what you're doing. Can you uh, uh, give us an idea or tell the board? It can be the Reader's Digest version. I don't want you to uh, have to drag us through this, but. Uh, Give us some ideas of what you're doing, what, tell us what you're doing, and then what you need from us. I'll, I'll start with a general overview and then we can kind of quickly balance and I'll, I'll, brevity is, uh, is paramount probably. So Unison Energy, <clears throat> we are a, a combined heat and power uh, company, which is, other, you might have heard of cogeneration. It's on-site power uh, run by natural gas engines. And <clears throat> It's more efficient. It's when it works. Uh, there's, there's certain customers that are usually good for it. Hospitals are uh, key users of combined heat and power, uh, amongst other industries. But hospitals are the primary beneficiaries of it. Uh, you put the natural gas engines on site, and you provide the facility with power, and you provide the facility with heat. <coughs> In hospitals, case hot water. It's more efficient. Therefore. It, provides the hospital the facilities energy savings, it provides more reliable power, it allows the facility to be up and running 100% uh, when, when the grid goes out, still connected to the grid, um, and it reduces carbon footprint <clears throat> oftentimes, depending on the state where it is. So it's an old technology, uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent these days, 
for a lot of reasons I won't bore you with. Uh, we've been very active in Maryland um, with three hospital projects underway, and Union Hospital is, is one of ours. And uh, we're, we're underway now doing a lot of design and engineering work. Um, so we've been work, I've been working with Mark for well over a year. These projects take a long time to get up and running. The economics are tricky, it's very complicated, and in this case, and I'll let Tom talk a little bit about it here tonight, is <clears throat> our model is to own as an owner, operator, developer of these systems. So Unison Energy has investors and we own these systems, therefore our customers don't have to come out of pocket and buy them. Uh, it can be very expensive systems, so it's a, it opens up the market, if you will. A lot of hospitals don't have the budget to, to buy these systems, or if they do have that budget or capital, they'd rather put that somewhere else, maybe a new operating room or an MRI machine or what have you. So that's our model. Um, the economics can get very tricky by, by having this uh, PPA model, which is a power purchase agreement. It shifts the ownership to us, and therefore, provides or gives an unintended tax consequence. And that's why we're here today to ask for this pilot program, which provides better economics, which we can then pass on to our customers, in this case, in the hospital. And I think there's precedent for it in the state of, Mass state of Maryland. And, uh, and so Tom can talk more to the details of, of uh, where we are. Sure, basically in the state of Maryland, um, the, an asset that's being used by a not-for-profit would not be subject to personal property tax. In this case, because the financier of the project is a for-profit company, <coughs> unintendedly makes you know, the assets are 100% located on a non-profit site for the benefit of a non-profit, for the use of a non-profit, uh, it makes them taxable to some degree. So that's the reason we're here to ask for a pilot to alleviate that burden. Um, we've been working with the county, we have an executed agreement for the county's portion of the tax, uh, but we do understand that there will be an administrative fee to an administrative pilot. Unfortunately, the state still requires the process to happen, and you guys will have an administrative burden you know, on that pilot. So we respectfully put them now in <coughs> presentation to cover those administrative costs on an annual basis. I think everyone uh, should have here, you've got, you've got uh, in front of you a Union Hospital and Unison Energy Project, and, and here is uh, the proposed dollar amount uh, it's on page five. Five. It's on page five. five. Mr. Mayor, if I can give some more further details yes. in regards to the system itself. Um, as everybody can, I'm sure, remember, when Superstorm Sandy came up <coughs> first, uh, it devastated large chunks of you know, Maryland as well as devastated pieces of New York as well as New Jersey. Uh, during that time, hospitals in New York City lost power, and there are still some sections, as, my, as I understand, of New Jersey that are still trying to recover from that storm, which is four or five years old now. The beauty of this type of system is that when there is an event um, of that proportion, and because Delmarva does a great job here, you know, this is this is no slight by from Delmarva. Actually, Delmar was a, is a contributor to this project because it helps take uh, load off of the grid. You know, they're, they're a major <coughs> contributor to this project. Um, but when there is an event uh, such as that, the hospital would continue to run because we would be our own power station. We would be our own power station you know, during the summer when even a minor, you know, minor interruption like a thunderstorm taking out a pole or whatever, um, at that point, we would no longer have air conditioning in the hospital. Well, we all realized from the news last year what happened quickly in Florida, you know, where a nursing home facility lost power, didn't take the proper steps to move their patients across the street, and uh, and people died. Unnecessarily, people died. So it's it's our charge, you know, as, as the hospital, is to make sure that we have systems that can work reliably, regardless of what's going on outside of the building. We believe that this is the best package that we can put together uh, with our partners from Unison that will allow us to have on-site generation not only for power, but also for steam and hot water. All three of you know, items that we use on a daily basis. Now obviously steam for hot water and heat, this type of weather everybody realizes, sure, we all want lots of heat. 
But we use heat in the, in the hospital 365. You know, there are patient rooms that are requiring heat or patients that require heat, even in the hottest day of the summer. You know, so it's not like the, the steam gets turned off you know, when, when it warms up outside. We're constantly using steam, we're constantly using hot water, obviously, and, uh, and the need for electricity is great. Um, this will power about somewhere between 85 and 90 percent of our total load for the hospital. Uh, so again, we, we still have the connection to Delmarva. When the system has to shut down uh, for maintenance or for uh, both major road calls, we still have the utility connection. <clears throat> what it will look like, um, we've gone to great lengths to design a barrier that will um, hide the ship's container, the sea container, uh, behind the wall. Uh, the container is specially designed to not only uh, contain all the equipment, but also the bath and most of the noise. Um, it's a 65 dB, which is just about us talking at this level uh, at 15 feet. So the you know, patient rooms above will not have to be impacted by noise or whatever from this ship. Mark, currently, uh, if Del Marva was to go down, you guys currently have generators? Yes, we do. We have two emergency generators um, that cover about 35 or 40 percent of the hospital. Okay. So if it would happen today, um, you know, an old is still working, we still have heat. Um, we still have <coughs> some of our imaging equipment, but departments <coughs> like the laundry, food services would be greatly impacted um, because it's they're not deemed critical loads. Most hospitals, diesel backup covers a fraction. It's an emergency, which you think of all a hospital being emergency, but it's really not all the hospital. Mm -hmm. And also, the, and this is an extreme circumstance, I mean, going back to the Sandy story, um, a lot of the hospitals that were shut down had diesel backup, but there was no way to get diesel after a couple of days. So, and that was an extreme, as I said, extreme circumstance. So this, this avoids that topic, and all that situation altogether. And this is gas? Natural, natural gas. gas. Natural gas. Natural gas powered. Think of a diesel engine, a diesel backup. It's, okay. it's like that. It looks, looks similar. It's hard to tell the difference, but it's run on natural gas. <clears throat> you can put everything into a, think of a, a shipping container, you know, 50 by 10. And it's got the, the engine in there. It's got the switch gear. It's got uh, heat recovery, everything. And then we, we build that off site. We bring it to the site, get it as close as we can to the mechanical and the electrical time. Where would that be? It would be um, if you're facing the front of the hospital, you've got the front entrance and you've got the flagpole, and then there's a um, there's a driveway or a strip that goes to the same <coughs> surgery entrance. It would be on that um, left hand side. So you would be right of the driveway. Is it going to impede the driveway? No. No. Everything we, there stays the same? We've got a driveway. Well, we have to make a few modifications mm -hmm. to Currently, there's four parking spaces, uh, handicap parking spaces. Yes. We have to switch to uh, an angle parking. We'll lose one parking space, and we have to modify one of the aisles right there. That's um, not that, but that's, that's really the, the only <coughs> thing that's in the driveway. Well, I, I can tell you, I, I saw the uh, initial presentation, and, and you and I had spoke, right. and, and we're actually going to talk a little bit later on tonight. Yeah, I'll wait and, around. And, and, well, <laughs> we have, uh, and you know, I, what we were discussing is I said, well, if this is going to work for the hospital, why couldn't it work for us at the wastewater treatment plant? Wastewater treatment plants are, are another industry that is, is a very good candidate for it. But I want to let you know, we just bought a backup generator. That, <coughs> We have three. We have three, and we just bought them. Okay. So uh, we're probably out of that mix right now. You can still back up. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. But I like the idea of it. Uh, anyone from the board have any questions or comments in regards to this? No, I, I do. Oh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. You're, you're, this is a pilot plan for 20 years, and then you come back for another 20. Typically, um, with pilot agreements that are of this nature, generally that's how they're structured. There's, the, the goal is that as long as the system, they have a caveat in there that says basically as long as the system's in place, the pilot is in place to cover the unintended tax consequence. Now, the caveat that should be in the agreement that is in, for example, in the counties is, is that if the system goes away or is no longer running or no longer in service, then it, the pilot agreement terminates. 
Lou, do you have any major issues with us? How does the pilot agreement benefit Union Hospital? Yeah. Our, by us waiving our personal property tax that we could generate from Unison, how does that benefit Union Hospital? Good question. So when I was speaking earlier, the three benefits really are to, to a hospital or a customer of these systems are savings, rely, savings one, power reliability two, and some folks put a lot of value on carbon footprint reduction. So, but the first two really are the major pieces of it. Mark is an engineer, facilities guy, so in, in, in hospitals, it's a balance. If I talk to Mark, he's all about the power reliability. If I talk to the CFO at a hospital, it's about the savings. And the savings can be typically in Maryland somewhere in the 10 to 15% range on energy spend. And hospitals right now across the country and certainly East Coast are in a real tight financial bind. They're trying, they're, they're finding, you know, their revenues are somewhat set so they can do, they're trying to do everything they can to bring the costs down. By us owning this and having the tax relief, we can pass that on to the SIS, on to the That's hospital. That's the point I'm making. This, this PPA you'll have right. between the hospital and, and your company, Unison, right. so by the town and the county, for that matter, having a pilot agreement will benefit them through a savings that you won't have to pay in personal property tax. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make here. That we want to benefit Union Hospital in some tangible way. Right. So what we do, when we, we put all the capital expenditure out on this, and then we build a hospital for the power and the therms. And so if we the better economics that the project has, we can provide the hospital the lower rate. So it's passed through, and then, you know, because the, the other point here is um, just to further expand for the hospital to, you know, in the state of Maryland, not for profit hospital, because hospitals' revenues are set. They can't, they can't gain any more revenue no matter what, you know, they do on an annual basis. The only time that they can generate, lack of a better term, capital investment ability is through cost savings. So if they want to buy another MRI machine, it has to go into their budget. And in order to make room in that budget, they have to have some type of a call savings to do that, to better their services. So that also goes to this in the fact that if they're if they're not financing an energy, you know, they're not financing this energy solution, it's being financed out on the outside. So that passes some savings right there at the top part. And then on top of that, with the better the economics of the energy agreement themselves, then that's more savings to the hospital. So to the point of the 10 to 15 percent is typically what they see as a savings. That 10 to 15 percent that the hospital is now saving can be reinvested into their goods, services, equipment, technology, etc. So that's what this goes into to benefit the hospital. We're, we're projecting at this point an annual savings of somewhere over $100,000 um, for our utility expenses. And that Just savings is generated by the agreements that. Uh, you, you would have with both the county and the town and waiting for some property tax. Yeah. And you know what the numbers are without it? Um, they're higher. I, I don't well, know. I'm actually, assuming they're higher. Well, it's, it's, I, can, I don't know. I, don't well, know. I, mean, I can project aware, the tax liability. <clears throat> yeah, I can project the tax liability. He's aware liability. of, you know, we either get this pilot or we don't, and here's our two options, right? We're at the point on this project, it's getting thinner and thinner, and in all honesty. What's, like, what do we mean thinner and thinner? On, there's been um, some, via, some of the equipment we need to get Mark and the hospital what they want mm -hmm. is for a lot of reasons wildly uh, more expensive than what everybody expected. So that's why at some point, if, you, if, if the economics get out of whack, the project just doesn't make sense for them or for us. Mm -hmm. And so that's why every little bit You're on this side makes the project it. viable. At some point, you get past the point of no return. And so in, in this case, especially, that tax relief for the pilot program doesn't make a huge difference, but it makes enough. Um, the, the original projection, uh, because we've been, the uh, hospital's been looking at this for a system for several years. Um, Systems cost anywhere between 3.5 and 4 million. You know, that's the, the budget. You, know, you walk into the dealership, and that's that's what they'll tell you to the folks. Um, with 
the equipment that Jack had mentioned about the, it's called variable frequency drives, which is um, three <coughs> specialized pieces of equipment that we need for the hospital because of our uh, power configuration that we received from Delmarva. <coughs> um, it's added an extra million dollars onto that that typical dealer cost. So we're about the that be a like 3.5. Yeah. It's, it's well over four million dollars. So it's, it's trying to, again, bring some of that relief back because at some point, you know, it may be that it's not where it's it would be great for reliability for the hospital. You can never turn that part away. Um, but economically, it may not be as much savings. Does that answer? Mr. Lemon, I'm going to open up the floor because you always have a good question. Yeah, this isn't a good question. I just, I'm assuming we're forfeiting dollars that we didn't have in the past. That's correct. And then I haven't heard a figure from you on what the dollars are. We haven't fully negotiated that yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's negotiated. Okay. Well, I, I know what we're losing. I know what the savings are. So I think that there's a there's a there's a, a little bit there that we can. Uh, Maybe, I feel that we should be getting as much as the county gets. I mean, that's that's it. That's that's why you're here for to figure out the numbers. Yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> it, it, you know, the numbers are pretty transparent. Um, based on the the, the rate for the pilot that we came up with was based on basically paying a 20% administration fee of the taxes that would be given. <coughs> the county's rate happens to be nearly twice of what the, the town's rate is, so therefore that's why the dollar value was different okay. in those. Well, here's what I'm going to ask the board. Uh, the board collectively feel okay with the, with the program? At this point, I do. I do. I, do. I mean, whatever we can do. Then what we'll do is we'll, Lou, we're going to leave it up to you to uh, get the agreement. Yeah, we'll develop the resolution, bring it back to the board, and uh, that that's what they're looking for. Okay, perfect. That's great. We feel good about it, and what we're going to do is maybe creep that up just a little bit and uh, send it back over to you. Mr. Lemon. Will there be a time, uh, a time frame on this agreement? Yeah, I think that you're... A year or two years or something like that? And then how will we deal with the uh, uh, is this an annual amount or is this a one-time amount? It's an annual amount. Annual amount. Okay, well that's a little bit different. I was I wasn't sure if it was. Oh uh, yeah, no, it, it's annual because in the state it's of a twenty-year agreement unless the equipment itself goes away. So what we'll do is we'll get that over to you. I know time is of the essence, and uh, hopefully we'll have it all together where we can vote on it at the next meeting. Sound Thank good? Yeah, and, sure. and listen, on the wastewater treatment side, I do want to meet with you, but I don't know. I know, I know you go, I'll, I don't want to take, I'll call you or I'll Perfect. You Let's do that. About it. I, we can look into it, and if the fact that y'all got new generators um, eliminates the economic, economics working, then we're the first person, first group to say it's not, doesn't work. I, I can tell you, we just bought, we just bought I mean, literally, <clears throat> last fiscal week, or we, did we pay for in this fiscal? We, we have the, the part of the, of the uh, wastewater treatment plant has a 1500 kW generator. Uh, okay. The other part of the plant has a brand relatively new 400 kW and a uh, 150 kW. Okay. So we have a gazillion power down there. Okay. It's, it might be worth running the numbers just because if you're recovering the heat, that, that makes the difference. There's no personal property tax with us. <laughs> one another big reason to look at Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's, Lewis, it's, are those I'll, generators for emergency purposes or they run all the time? Depends on, we have that agreement with them. Do we run at certain times? Yeah, well, yeah we have to run event. at certain times. So uh, when you have a peak load, if tomorrow has a peaking like, load, we'll, we'll run the 15 kW for a while. Again, so, having, having a power producing plant that saves money over the utility cost on a daily basis might be something too. Yeah, That's one, where we one of the reasons we put in a 1.2 uh, megawatt solar, solar panel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not coming out of pocket, you can still save you money. That's what I'm, I'm saying. That might be an option. I agree with you, and, then, and we have to look at it. Right. Right. So I'm going to hook uh, I'm going to hook you and Lou up here. <coughs> Fair enough. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Okay, up next, uh, Carly Timmons. Just Carly, come on down. <coughs> Carly's going to talk to us about the American Cancer Society and Cecil County Relay for Life update. Hello, I'm Carly Timmons. I'm representing um, American Cancer Society as a community manager for Cecil County. Um, I just wanted to update a little bit about our event um, that we have every year and thank the town of Elkin for all their support. It's tremendous um, between logistically, financially, um, police for trash pickup, and just um, letting us have a presence in the community. Um, it's a tremendous help, so thank you for that. Um, this year, the event will be at Elkton High School on May 19th, Saturday, noon to midnight. Um, so we just um, want to promote um, signing up for teams and coming out to the event and just checking it out. It's really fun for families. Um, we switched it from an overnight event. Um, we thought that would be a little um, easier for some of the community members based on our feedback. Um, and then another thing that we wanted to do this year was paint the town purple in the first weekend of May. So um, we just wanted to see um, if we could do that again. That was really um, fun last year and the community requested that. Um, so that's all I have, just a little update about some of our events, and thank you for your support. Well, I can tell you, I, I very I very much appreciate the efforts that you guys do, you. and uh, we're here to support in any way we can. And we've got a great team. We've got Janie as our representative yes. uh, for our mm -hmm. town to mm -hmm. help us uh, put that together, and we're going to start, we want to start tomorrow and raising money because I want us to get to ten thousand dollars this year. We got to get to ten thousand dollars. Thank you. I appreciate Very good. that. Yeah. Anyone from the board have any questions, concerns? I was at Alton High School and at the time they had an administrative position. I remember they used to come in on Friday afternoon and get ready for your all-nighter. What type of feedback have you gotten since you changed the time around? I know it should be much easier. You're going from noon to midnight. Yeah. So this is the first year that we are changing from an overnight event. The overnight was really popular with the high school students and the middle school students. Some of them really loved staying overnight. It was a lot of fun. Um, but generally our feedback was um, they don't have the time or they want to bring their families to all day, kind of family fun day, um, just so it would be easier. We would get more people to the event, a little bit more support. And, um, we really just want to promote um, some of the services that we have for um, survivors, people going through cancer, caregivers, and that's a better way to um, get the word out uh, about our support. Oh, that's a great job. Thank you. Very touching. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. What date, what date is the relay? I'm sorry. May 19th. 19th. Saturday, May 19th. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, next is the Cecil Transit update. Come on down. So we got Suzanne Kalmacher yes. and Jonathan Creamer. Thank you guys so much. I know we requested uh, yes. uh, uh, for you to come in and, and uh, what I was uh, looking at to accomplish, I, I, I would like to understand the route a little bit, maybe explain the route. And then I had a couple comments that some of our seniors have made to me that maybe you could take back and maybe we can make some improvements. Sure, sure. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having us tonight. Um, I'm Suzanne Kronbacher. I'm the transit chief. Um, and before, before Jonathan gets into a little more information about our routes, I just kind of want to tell you some of the exciting things that we have going on. Um, the first thing that, that we have in the works is our transportation development plan, which is done every five years by a consultant um, funded through the MTA and the FTA. So we're in the middle of that and we're really excited to see um, the recommendations on how transit should move forward in the next five years. Um, looking back to the past five years, uh, we really have come a long way from um, basically just senior transportation <coughs> to now a full fixed route system as well. We currently have four fixed routes, which Jonathan will give you more information on. Uh, we have a full demand response service, um, and our latest route is set to launch on April 2nd of this year. Um, it is going to be a commuter rail shuttle between the Newark train station and the Perryville train station, um, with a parking ride located at the halfway point at, at Cecil College. 
Uh, so we're really, really excited to be able to, to bridge the gap in rail service um, with the help through um, MTA and FTA. So that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan to give you a little more information. Absolutely. So um, the route you're probably most familiar with, we have four routes that we operate within the county, um, would be the Upton, our Upton-Glasgow connection. I yes. think is one you've seen the most of. Uh, so that's our bus that will come in through town here, uh, make a lot of stops on a lot of different streets that will go out towards Hollingsworth Manor. After there, it will go on 40 for a bit, come down to 13, hit Springford Gardens, hit Skip Jack Court, go across the street, hit Elkton Transitional before coming back out on the 40, hitting a lot of businesses along its way down to People's Plaza. Once it gets there, comes back down, hitting stops on 40 along its way, starts at the library and goes back through town all over again. So that's its loop for the day. Uh, the other uh, bus you might see a lot through town is the Elkton Newark connection. That's our number four route. Um, that's going to connect you over to People's Plaza as well. Um, more of a street shop than Glasgow is, doesn't go through town as much, but that will connect you over to town of Newark as well. That's our bus that will hit the, except the train station right now, you can still connect to that before we even start that new bus line. Um, but you know, take some connections between buses there. That bus then comes back down 279, coming back through town once again. Um, some of the ones you might not be as familiar with, would be the Perryville route, um, comes in through town a little bit, uh, stops in Union Hospital, Acme. Um, that bus will service the Route 4, Route 40 corridor a bit more, a lot of stops at businesses. Um, that's where we're stopping with Amazon right now, um, as well as the new businesses that will be coming in in that area. Um, goes all the way down to Perryville, hits the VA, um, hits stops coming out of town as well. Uh, the Mid County would be our other route. It's a lot of the same stops as Perryville, but doesn't service 40 as much. Um, it's more hitting the key points. It's the see the College Northeast, which is the only route that does that. It's also the only route that goes into Charleston. So it's a way we get to hit in there. Um, also, something we do with that fixed route service um, is that you're able to deviate up to three quarters of a mile off the fixed route. Um, it's a $4 flat fee for anybody who wants to do that. It's something you have to schedule ahead of time, but a way you can access those places that buses have typically go if you need to get to those locations. Any questions on those routes or place any feedback? Good luck well, here. Well, I think uh, uh, like how, the, the, the one that's uh, kind of in our downtown. Mm. How long does it take the whole route? The one that comes through town the Glasgow Connection is about an hour, about an hour 15, depending on if it's got a break on that route. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, probably the, the, the major comment that, that I've had uh, has been that uh, some of our seniors that take the route, and if they make it to the AFNI or to the shopping center and they get their groceries, they have to go a long route before they get back into the heart of the town. Correct. Right now, we do not run our routes in separate directions. We don't have, say, a loop inbound and a loop outbound. Um, I mean, we, we don't really have the ability to run that at this point in time. There's not um, enough ridership right now, I'm assuming, or I would there be? Yeah. Um, I, I think that's probably what our transportation development plan that we're in the middle of will help um, determine Probably the route that needs the most help with time is our Perryville route. It's an hour and 45 minutes between okay. loops. Uh, exactly. So that that's that's where we think we'll, we'll need the transportation development plan will point us in that direction. Um, and that plan is very important in order for us to get the funding that we need from MTA and FTA to be able to support those routes. So that kind of drives the funding as well. So with that being said, you know, there might be an opportunity for us to even to combine our Mid-County connection um, with our Perryville route to increase the level of service, you know, increase the frequency of service. Also, there may be opportunity to look at our Glasgow route and our Newark route, which kind of serve the same areas. And, and maybe combine service and maybe do opposite routes. So, so these are possibilities that, that will be looked at going into the future. But at this point, um, you know, we're kind of have our hands tied okay. until, until we get through that process. Well, you certainly uh, helped me understand how long it takes, because I can, I can respond back now that this is just kind of the way it is. Now, is there uh, the other, comment was, and this came from, uh, uh, we had met with the Cordish company that has, that owns the Big Elk Mall, 
and they would be willing to uh, uh, put an actual stop in for you somewhere in that mall where there would be like an overhang uh, during the weather and so forth. Is there any, uh, uh, what do I want to say, any codes or requirements? It would have to be ADA um, approved or ADA accessible. Um, but we can definitely get that information together. That would be great if you could actually get it to Gene. Sure, absolutely. That would be wonderful. Uh, one of the things that they wanted to get away from was the stop is right there at the Acme. At the Acme. And, and they tend to have good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, it just seems like a lot of loitering at mm -hmm. times. And uh, uh, the perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You well, understand. I certainly know you understand. Mm -hmm. and, but they're willing to pay for that okay. uh, uh, structure, and I think the sooner that we can get that information, that would be great. Absolutely, that would be wonderful. Uh, anyone from the board have any? Um, okay. I have a question on the bus schedule itself. Mm -hmm. um, we used to get them because I'm in the visitor center on Main Street, mm -hmm. and we used to get them a lot. And now we print them out okay. for people. Do you still have? Them. Absolutely, and if you and like my cart, I, I distribute them around town, so I can always make you a stop down visitor center. Yeah, and please. And does tourism have them as well? I'm not sure that they do. That's yeah, I, I don't think so yeah. either. Do we they, have them I'd be happy to get them oh, to sure. the senior yeah, centers yeah. as well. We probably could. Do we have We print them out, but if you want to bring them by. Oh, anyway. absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Any other comments? Thank you. Yes, Jean. Could you talk to ridership over the past few years, how increases, decreases, day to day? Sure. Um, and I, unfortunately, I'm not prepared to give you really great information, but um, really over the last five years, uh, ridership has, has really increased. Um, we are actually seeing a little bit of a law this year. Um, but that's not unusual. That, that's kind of the transit system in, ge in general. And I think as we make improvements to our transit system, we'll, we'll continue to see growth. Um, I think that we've seen a change in, in who uses the service. Um, that, that's probably the biggest change that we've seen. Uh, you know, for the longest time, it was seniors that accessed um, our transit system. Now, people are using it to get to jobs. People are using it to get to medical appointments, shopping. Um, all, all sorts of reasons. So we're reaching a broader, uh, a broader scope, and I think that's the most exciting thing um, that we've accomplished in the last several years. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks. 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 We appreciate it. And we'll be in touch. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, Lou, you are on. The first item I have tonight is Ordinance Two. The Ordinance Two is a. Uh, Amendment to uh, code, uh, specifically the buildings and construction under Chapter 15.16. These are recommended by Controller Bromwell, the building official. And uh, since this is a very extensive uh, section chapter, I will just in indicate the changes that are being made. Under 15.16.010 definitions, the definition of accessory structure is added, which means not limited to a garage, attached or detached, a shed, a swimming pool, or a pool house. Additionally, uh, central heating is amended to include areas and shall we also include centrally located floor furnace, ductless many split systems, and electric based board heaters located in all habitable rooms. Back here further. Under the Article 2 Minimal Standards Conflicts, the words all dwellings, dwelling units, and accessory structures are added. I are getting all this. Uh -huh. Under 1560-100 heating, the words uh, sufficient heat or heating equipment is struck and central heating is added. And under 1516.130, property maintenance conditions of structure. Uh, under A, the words are added, all dwelling and accessory structures are added. One of the reasons these changes are being made is because when the uh, building official and the code people uh, go to enforce uh, some of the standards here for 
um, rental housing in particular, uh, then these, the, um, I guess the courts have not um, allowed the prosecution of those cases to be successful because the property definitions and uh, words and were not actually included in the ordinance. So these words are being added to give enforcement uh, strength to the code and the building official for rental housing. Do we have a motion to uh, for introduction to uh, introduce ordinance 2-2018 housing standards? Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, and we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, the next item I have is the American Red Cross. They have rented our uh, building down there next to uh, the uh, Department of Public Works for a number of years now. And uh, a year or two ago, they went by and they decided to rent it on a year to year basis. The current uh, lease expires uh, March 30th. 2018 and they are requesting a uh, extension term that actually the seventh extent amendment to the lease agreement that would allow them to occupy that building and uh, for April 1st 2018 through March 30th 2019 and uh, American Red Cross as the board is well aware is a very valuable asset to have in our community and this building uh, we, we do not need this building at this particular time so a year to year lease is not in the contrary to the public interest so i would recommend that the board authorize the seventh amendment to lease agreement to the american Red cross for the rental of 207 blue ball avenue for a one-year period we have a motion to approve the uh, seventh amendment lease with the american red cross for 207 blue ball avenue for a one-year extension so move. <coughs> motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Next slide I have is the uh, town of Big Fulton annexation policy. The board um, may be well aware that uh, annexation policy was adopted in 2006. However, when I reviewed the policy, I uh, noted that the um, references, legal references, uh, for 23A section 19 which no longer exists. It was repealed by the uh, General Assembly, Maryland General Assembly, and, and now the um, the municipal, I mean the local government article prevails. And the policy statement is only changed with respect to reference to the sections of law that are current rather than any change of substantive, substantive, substantive nature to the text of the of the thing. This policy statement has been reviewed by council, and I believe that he is in, uh, believes that it's uh, all correct. Uh, do we have a motion to accept the uh, town of Elton annexation policy presented for? Uh, Actually, it's a, you pass this. It's a, it's yeah, it's policy. just a policy statement. We have a motion? Sorry. And Sorry. a second. Any discussion on this policy statement? Hearing none, all in favor. Aye. Motion carries. Resolution number three. I believe the board uh, have sent a copy of this to the board. I'll read this resolution. A resolution of the mayor and commission of the town of Elton supporting the application of 120 EM LLC to the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Developments Neighborhood Business Works Program to provide financial assistance for the development of the Elk River Brewing Company. 112 East Main Street, Elton, Cecil County, Maryland. Whereas the mayor commissioners support and encourage business development in commercial areas of the town, including downtown business district, where 120 EM LLC is the owner of real property identified on tax map 310 parcel 1166, address is 112 East Main Street, where 112 EM LLC will establish the Elk River Brewing Company. And whereas 120 EM LLC applied to the Neighborhood Business Works Program for financial assistance to support the development of the Elk River Brewing Company, which includes a craft brewery and tap room. And whereas 120 EM LLC property is located in Elk in a sustainable community and a priority funding area and within the town center uh, zoning district where a production brewery and pub brewery with a Maryland Class 5M production brewery license and a Maryland Class 6M 
of the brewery license are conditionally permitted. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor Commission is consistent with the requirements of the Neighborhood Business Works Program, fully support 120 EMLLC's application for financial assistance to the Neighborhood Business Works Program for the development of the Elk River Brewing Company at 112 Main Street, Delta. Be it further resolved that copies of this resolution be sent to Mr. Michael Walensky, Director of Business Lending Programs, Neighborhood Business Works Program, Maryland Department of Housing and Development, 7800. Parkins Road, Landfill, Maryland, 20706. We have a motion to approve resolution R3-2018. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the George Elk River Brewing Company? All I can say is I'm extremely excited. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Motion carries. I complete my items. Okay, very good. Uh, I, I was uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania the last couple days, and and uh, we took a couple uh, ride through the area, and uh, they're battling water main breaks just like we're battling water main breaks also. But Dan, how many water main breaks have we had? 26 since the first of the year. 26 since the first year, and listen, I applaud you and the uh, Public Works Department for getting them done. Uh, I think the longest that anyone's been without any water was probably that eight hour period maybe that uh, was in probably one of the worst air, worst places that we could ever have a water main break. It wasn't for the ground, it would be quicker, but you know, three, five year ground will do that to you. But in most cases, uh, your team is able to uh, uh, dig that hole, put it together in three to four hours, right? Exactly, it's a very good, a very efficient. They, they do a fantastic job. Now once, the uh, I just wanted to confirm this, once of course, once it warms up, our water meter program, where are we at on that? I just want to, are we doing the pilot? Or are we not doing a pilot? We are doing the pilot, correct? Correct. Very good. So we're going to do that pilot in Turnquist. Is that still? The no. Lancy Village. The Lancy Village. The Lancy Village. Okay, very good. And that'll give us an idea of how the whole project's going to work. Okay, I just wanted to confirm that. And that'll happen when the uh, once we the season breaks a little bit here. <laughs> as soon as the uh, water meets the All right, perfect, perfect. Uh, with that, that's actually all I have. Jean, you're on. Well, I wanted to thank you too, Dan. I've, I've never seen so many potholes pop up in one time, but what I did notice about them is that your guys are right on them, getting them taken care of. So thank you for that. Um, Mr. Ginder, I, I've been wanting to ask you, did you get your water issue addressed? Yes. Yeah. All good? Yep, it's good. It's oh, fine. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yes. I, I'm, I've been meaning to ask you that. Thank you. Uh, I have nothing else. Uh, what do I have? I don't know. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all the town officials who supported the uh, Martin Luther King uh, program at Rights on Monday. It's a community thing, and certainly you have been a great support. And the speaker was outstanding. I think you all know that. And it, 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 it was great that, as he said, that the crowd that he saw, and he always mentioned Elton. He didn't know what Elton was like it was. and. Uh, I think he went away with good vibes. He acknowledged the, the police department and Mr. officials out, and that made it uh, good. I wish I had a sign. Your sign at the time, good. I thought sign would be out there. Mm -hmm. For his picture. <laughs> that that would have been great. been great. That would have been. We are out there, rather. But it was good. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you for inviting us all. Yeah. Yes, yeah thank you for having us. That was it was moving. It was. That's it. Carl, I have nothing to report. Very good. Um, I just quickly want to put it in the back of everyone's head. When I came on this board, um, Earl and Charlie they were working on a rec center. You were working on a rec center before I was <coughs> here. Um, while in office, Commissioner Ponder requested 500000 be put aside for the rec center. And it's kind of been like this. And I would really like us to start discussing that, or I should say community center. Um, 
for the children, for the seniors, for, you know, we have a lot of people out there that are looking for something to do. And with Earl, with his basketball and getting gyms, and Charlie's so involved in, in that, um, and you as well with the some adult sports we were talking about. Uh, so if we could get some conversation going, um, and see what we need to do to move forward. I would say let's uh, put it on the 14th of February's workshop. Great. And uh, we'll kind of give a recap of where we're actually at. Perfect. And where your $500,000 is. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. 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 Just, just to add to that. Well, let me add something first, then I'll put you on the spot. I'd like to thank you, Mary Jo, for bringing that up. I know being at Elton, I live here, but to deal with those athletes and those kids up there, they need some place to go. They have no place to go. And a lot of issues and problems they have, uh, it's not our fault, but hopefully the town can be able to help. And while I'm going to put her on the spot, he and I are both members of the YMCA, and now they're on you. How do you know I was here bringing it up too? <laughs> we just attended the meeting today and now just for the records there have been some concerns the kids have no place to go because of the uh, they want to use the word merger of the YMCA even though it's a, it's a good thing I'm saying so um, the, uh, it, it's not the town issue it's uh, well it's a, a county thing so the merger had has changed from just using a pass for the kids to get in, like on a day like this when they're out of school, they can pay for about $5 voucher and get in. But we want to emphasize that the plan has changed where if the parents now, the parents have to be involved with, they have to bring their tax return or form in to show where they fall in as far as for their income. Most of these kids can probably go without having to pay five to $10 for the whole year instead of every time they actually go into the um uh the, the ymca this is a good thing because i know i've got a grandson that goes in here four or five times a week and if he pays five dollars that's 25 dollars based on his family income um he could probably make 30 dollars or less than that by that percentage and get in there for the whole year as a member so and they give a two-year membership they said so through this um report i'd rather just say please have the parents Go into the Y, request the application, fill the application there, and the kids might be able to attend for less than twelve dollars, so based on what we talked about today, no, based on their income. So I'm just saying that for record because uh, <laughs> the kids come to us and, and we have to explain. We didn't have an explanation, so hopefully that can be some kind of way we can share that with other than just here. Hopefully the. The uh, YMCA would get things out to the school so they can hand out to the families. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, this is the time of the meeting. We open up the floor for the public. Yes, sir. State your name, address again. And hey, you're good one. 214 okay. York Street. Uh, same motion as before. Looking for the unanimous proclamation. I'd like to add to that, though. I'd like to uh, recommend to Officer Dan Morgan for Police Officer of the Year. He's giving two safety presentations uh, to the seniors at the uh, senior residence. And absolutely fantastic, absolutely fabulous. So, you know, that, that's my proposal. Thank you. And, and I will tell you, we will take it to heart and we'll consider those. Um, um, Thank you very much. We absolutely will. Uh, well, he's currently a colonel over there now. I'm not sure if we can put four stars on him or not. And, and, and I would also <laughs> like to see him have to do the chief. That's right. That's right. We'll get a picture. You'll get a picture taken with the chief tonight. I want to let you know that. Anyone else have anything? Mr. Lemon. Yes, sir. How does the armory fit into the rec center? The uh, currently, right now, uh, the communication in regards to the armory, the latest that we have is that they were moving forward with some appraisal work. It's in a, in a clearinghouse process right now. It goes through an elaborate and complex uh, bureaucracy before it ever gets to the point where the, um, the building would be made available. But it has been declared surplus by the National Guard, so it, it's, uh, it's not going to be used for National Guard purposes once the armory east in this bill. 
because then the National Guard, except for recruiting over here, the, all the, the uh, military aspects will go to the East. Yeah. And I think we'll talk about that on the workshop day. Uh, and I think that that's kind of put us a little bit from moving forward with our original plans. Let me just put it that way. I think that we have, we, we truly have a, a kind of a mixed board <coughs> up here. We I think we all want the armory, but we all also believe that we need a, a dedicated community center also. And uh, maybe, maybe one could serve us both. We may or may not believe that. So that's where we're kind of at, I think. And we'll get, get to the bottom of that. Another question. Yes, sir. I read in the bar where some about what Dan's talking about. They have the same problem. The pipes get cold if they're down when it warms up. They break when they work when it warms up. It's kind of but the question is, and I asked this question a few years ago about uh, why we wouldn't have a plan to replace or upgrade the pipe system, you know, maybe in pieces and upgrade it over time. I was told it wasn't necessary because we're just going to do what Dan did. I'm not so sure that we should have a, a longer term plan because it's probably the problem in Elkton is probably the same as in Baltimore, that the pipes are very old and they're just not up to it anymore. It could well be, but we'll, we'll absolutely discuss that. And I know one thing that we're, uh, uh, we're going to have for the budget, come budgeting, uh, I really want us to continue the, the loop system in our community and it's going to be uh, a pretty expensive project, we know that, but if you have a water main break over here, you'll be able to turn the valve and you'll still be able to get water feeding around the other side. So there's a couple areas in town and that, that one uh, uh, part was the area where we didn't have the loop system. So we're going to, uh, that's something I'm going to bring to the board. Uh, we've actually had McCrone, I think years ago, did the drawings on. We know what we have to do, uh, but that's something that we're going to move forward with in 2018-2019 uh, for sure. That's new to me. It's it will, it'll be pretty neat. Anyone else have anything to say? Mr. Eddie Grinder? I mean, Ed Gender? <laughs> this is to back up what Earl was talking about. A couple months ago, I met with Viet Divine, Superintendent of Public Schools. Thompson Estates and Gilpin Manor students, 75% of those students are fed daily. And some of them are given food to take home for the weekend, because that's the only food they're going to get. 40% of the children in the whole county are fed daily meals in the whole county. And that, pro that figure would probably be higher, but the, the children in the middle schools are ashamed or don't take the time to apply for the program. I applaud Earl and, and Charlie for getting involved in this for the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Aiden. Hey, you know, it's so unfortunate. I, I uh, see so many kids, well, I'm not there anymore than that one, that actually come to school in this cold weather with no coats and some of no pants, and that's the conditions that they're in. I know I take a young man from basketball practice to Hollingsworth from Adam. He's on the JV team. And sometime after school, he would ride his bike in that cold weather all the way to school. And the kids would say, well, how did you come up here on a bike, let alone with no clothes? But it's a commitment that the young man has. So some of these kids have some trying time. So, you know, we try to do what we can do for them. Yeah, and I believe, and unless things have changed in the last year, to uh, the, all elementary schools are considered Title I schools now. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Very good. Anyone else have anything to say? Chief, you have anything? Any comments? Can you stick around for a photograph? Oh, sure. <laughs> all right, very good. This meeting's adjourned.